Hi, welcome to another episode of Aman Gil Show. Today in our studio, we have a dear friend of mine who has used the love for food and his art of spices to win people's heart around internationally around the world. We are in Vikram Vij's kitchen in his home. Actually, we are in his own restaurant, My Shanti. Welcome, Vikram. Pleasure. Namaste, namaste. Adab, Satsrikal, and hello to everybody. Thank you. Thank you for taking this time and having this conversation. And you have won so many people's heart around the world with the love you have for the food and the love you have for the spices mm-hmm. and how you put that together. It You've changed the language of food especially coming from India and bringing those spices into this Western world and how you put together the food and how you presented it and you gave a new life to it. So thank you. My pleasure. You know, um, I'm honored for all this accolades that you've given me, but I actually just put myself on the plate. You know, I, I came from a very beautiful country called India, which has beautiful spices. And then using that spices and creating and having learned in Europe, I actually put myself on the plate. Basically, I said, this is who I am. I'm not going to conform to one way of being. Mm -hmm. I am going to be who I am, which is a best unappointed ambassador of the country that I left behind, Mm -hmm. but a best unappointed ambassador of this beautiful democracy called Canada that I live in that I cherish and I love so much. So I am thoroughly humbled to be given all these accolades. But at the end of the day, I just put myself on the plate. Well, you know what? You just touched such an important point because it takes a heart to do that. And you put your heart into it, right? It's you who is on the plate. You're so right because it doesn't matter which field of work we are. It is us on that plate. We are. It's us on that desk. We are us, that person to give that work. It all starts from us. Well, make an analogy of a tree, for example. Yeah. Take a tree. A tree has deep roots, Mm -hmm. it grounds itself, then the trunk grows, and then it flourishes itself. If you you take the tree from India to Canada, Mm -hmm. the tree still has to survive, which means it doesn't matter what field you're in, which country you're from, doesn't matter where you come from, whether you come from Syria or Afghanistan or, you know, Central America or from Guatemala, wherever you come from, you cannot forget your roots where you come from, but you cannot forget where you live and flourish accordingly. You are a typical example of, you know, what the French chefs call it, the terroir, Mm -hmm. which means you're part of your surroundings where you live in. So you have to be true and authentic at every every step of your life. Because if you're not, eventually you'll falter and you'll make a mistake. So, and you know, when we go deep into who you are today, but I like to reflect on your life. And um, you have written your autobiography in this book, The Veg is the Chef's One Way Ticket to Canada with Indian Spices and Suitcase. I really, really love it. Love it. It is so authentic, exactly who you are. And you actually opened your heart mm. when you were writing this book. And I want to highlight that. I want to highlight because... It's important for anybody who's starting a new business or going, they need to know what takes behind that. It's not the wealth or money to start a business, but emotionally Mm. what you, and if you don't mind sharing your journey from India and to Austria and the days that you had those Mm. days where you just felt lonely and just, and how do you pull yourself up from those days? Well, you know, as a, as, a, as a child growing up in India, I, I always believed that there is a power called drishti, mm-hmm. which is the third eye. You know, you have to have that focus. Uh, and the focus was, I wanted people to enjoy Indian food. I didn't want to be considered ethnic. I didn't want to be considered that I'm cheap and cheerful. I said, you have to treat me with the same respect and my cuisine with the same respect as you treat French cuisine and Italian cuisine. Uh, And that was the drishti. That Mm -hmm. was the focus. The focus was, I am here and I'll prove to you that my cuisine is as complex or as unique as any other cuisine. 
fast forward all these years, uh, you know, you come to Canada, you realize, how are you going to change mm-hmm. that perspective? You're going to change that perspective by taking and serving each dish at the time and creating newer, modern style of dishes. Just our kids, just the way they are. Ups go by because you suddenly get accolades, you become arrogant, you think you know it all, everything happens. And bang, somewhere along the lines, some God pulls the rug and says, hello, hello, you're flying a little too high here. Come down to the ground. And you come down to the ground and you realize and you fall and you make mistakes. Mm -hmm. The book is about the ups and downs of life. But that happens to all of us. I do not want anybody to think that only happens to me or to you or to anybody else. It happens to all of us. We all go through those moments. The only ones that survive are the ones who get up and say, all right, let's go. Let's keep moving. I mean, I take an example of a man called Gandhi, Mm -hmm. you know, in a loincloth, in a simple loincloth, he single-handedly changed the course of a nation called India. Imagine that legacy that he has left behind. Imagine that focus he must have had in life. Imagine the love that he must have had. That is the same love that I have for my cuisine, for my culture, from my history where I come from, and towards humanity. My love is not just of being an Indian. My love is for every human being. Because at the end of the day, the color of our blood is exactly the same. It doesn't matter who you are. And you just, um, when you talked about Gandhiji, and it's amazing because it's all fake. The belief in faith, yeah. like you, he believed it didn't matter. He didn't have the money. He didn't have, um, you know, big, but his faith in believing to bring peace and walk. And he, how many minds followed him. Correct. Right. Same thing. You have that faith. And that's, I think we need to recognize faith is so important to believe in faith because that's the most powerful thing. You don't need everything. But if you have faith. It will happen. Faith in yourself Self, yes. to be able to make the changes. Faith in yourself to say, I am going to be on this path. This is the right path and I am going to follow it. Yes. And so going back to your life, and I know you talked about your father quite a bit <laughs> in, um, in the conversations. I love your hair. And I know he <laughs> always was not happy with that. He's still not happy with it. He still looks at me and says, Are you have so much hair. Why don't you get a haircut? (laughs) But that defines you, right? That's who you are. It does. And the funniest thing is when I do get a haircut, I just get a little trims. Yeah. And then later on, he'll come back and says, Really? You paid that much money for like like this much of trimming? And I'm like, but that's... That's what it is. Yeah. That's what it's supposed yeah. to be. And, you know, and I think coming from that um, background, like I'm, I bought, was born in India too. And I remember, I know how the culture is like they, especially you being the son, how the parents have that expectations and you're the only son mm. and they had that expectations of you. And you, I guess that was a big part of you growing up because of the expectations. Mm. How did that change you as a person? So I was the only Vidge in the yeah. family. You know, uh, everybody else, obviously my father had sisters and I was the only Vidge in the family. So as a young age, it was always thrown in my face, but in a very beautiful way, obviously, that I'm the only one who's going to carry the name of Vidge. Mm-hmm. So the name of the restaurant Vidge is, is to honor Roshan Lal Vidge, which is my grandfather. The honor of the, the restaurant was called Vidge's to to showcase that, oh, yes, that name of the legacy has been left behind. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like calling Tata or calling uh, Gandhi or having a last name that works Mm -hmm. in that sense. Um, The relationship with my father was tumultuous and always has been is because we didn't see eye to eye. He hated everything that was entertainment and he was way too practical of a human being. I loved everything that was entertainment dancing, music, Bollywood, girlfriends, and he was all against it. Uh, So this constant tug of war, and even now sometimes our principles do not match. 
But at the end of the day, the fundamentals are that he loves me mm-hmm. and I love him. So could could you would you say that his expectations kind of defined you and got you here too? Will will that be correct to say? It, but I won't be just him. I have to give my mother, mother. that fifty percent okay. of it because she was unfortunately mm-hmm. that uh, that person who was stuck between a rock and a hard place because mm-hmm. her love for her son was so much that she wanted to protect and let his let him flourish but she also came from a very traditional indian background where she had to support her husband so she was always that buffer between both of us you know who who would go at it and principally disagree on things mm-hmm. but over the years i think you know um i learned how to cope with him he learned how to cope with me and we are at a very happy place and we have said lots of things peaceful uh, over the years but it does make your parents you know i play a very significant role and i tell people that don't think your parents don't play an important role they do play of course the society does what happens to you in life they does but uh, your parents do play a, a formidable low role in your life in becoming on who you are and where you go with it and and now that you have two daughters yes <laughs> and now which is like i'm just going back to the culture part and how does that feel to you does it bother you at all because i know it was your father thing and you're in this newer generation where you don't have that which so how does that affect or does it even make it doesn't come across, across to me because uh, to be honest with you i think my daughters when they get married they're going to continue with the name vidge mm-hmm. so for me the legacy of vidge has already been created they are going to continue with that name they're not going to change their name i think they're modern enough to say no you know this is what was the name that was given to me and that's who i am and and i hope they continue with that as well and but I if they that. do I love that. Thank you because a lot of fathers needs to hear that because they have that perception that daughter has to change the last name just because they're married and you just said you just set that bar no they don't need to. No they don't need to. Thank and you. and even when we were married when Meeru and I were married I told Meeru I said you don't need to change your last name you mm-hmm. stick to Dalwala that's your last name because that's the name you grew up with that's mm-hmm. the name that you know of. And with all due respect I do think we men need to give the same platform and have to have gender equality and respect for uh the other sex it could be male could be female could be trans i'm i'm totally for it i i'm totally uh, open and i believe that uh we have to give the chance and this purely male dominated society needs to change and my women my daughters are part of that uh that change and i'm very proud of them and they are my boys if you want to call them as they are my girls you know if i had two boys i would say you are my two girls mm-hmm. i've never tried to have this disparity between oh they are my girls or they are my boys i've never said to them oh you are a girl so you should do this or you are boys you should do this i've always hated that stereotype typical form of it and i think maybe that was the reason why i wanted to leave india because i didn't want the arranged marriage i didn't want to be put in a little box and say this is what is expected out of you i wanted to be that free bird that flies and you know figures out my own how high i want to fly mm-hmm. how high do i want to soar i wanted to determine i didn't want anybody to determine for me So now going back I have to go back to your book because there are so many things that I like you to ask you because it actually inspired me and I just felt it. So when you were writing this book did you go back into those feelings of the sadness like did that like I know you when you move forward you forget but then it has to come back again. I mean it took a long time to write this book mm-hmm. I'll be honest with you. um there were times i shelved it i shelved the project in my mind i just said i can't do it i am not going to do it i'm not going to talk about it 
there were times when I I couldn't deal with that emotion, especially of separation and divorce and, you know, hurting the kids. And it was extremely tough. And at that time, I... I remember just crying over it and saying, I, I can't do this. I'm not going to do it. I, 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 I don't want to do it. But somehow something, whether it was a strength or an emotion would come back and say, I have to do it. Because if I don't do it, if I don't write it, how will somebody else know to get up and, and go to work the next day? So my goal was not to write about my story. My goal was to inspire somebody else to say, if Vikram Vij can go through it and survive, so can I, so will I. And I think that was what, what was a motivating factor for me. It, it, it was tough, no, no question about it. And Because hmm. uh, you went really deep into a lot of things when you're talking about your depression and uh, depression when you were trying to survive just to be like when you came to Canada you were told to leave your visa expired yeah and what you have to do to go out of your comfort like you know to do things that you have to stay here in this so in how did that affect you mentally like to going and you how did you fo kept on going focused going forward so if you if you look at if you look at I mean you know you grew up in India mm -hmm. and you're told stories of Gandhiji, Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King. When you take examples of those in your mind and you believe in those people, I mean, how many failures did, you know, Martin Luther King have? How many failures did Nelson Mandela have? I mean, what hardships he went through. And even in Punjabi community, you know, you grew up listening to uh, the martyrs of, of Sikhism who have done great job of, of creating or fighting their way for independence or for the peace movement. So when you think about it, uh, it bec you become so small compared to what the hardships that they must have gone through. So that's what motivates you. It's like, oh my God, being put behind in a prison for 20 years and having to break rocks a day. My life is not that bad that I have to, uh, uh, you know, cook for a little longer or work 16 hour days. So emotions of, of that's what motivates you. It's like, I'm not that bad. I'm okay. I'm going to survive. I'm okay. I'm going to survive. What hurts you the most is... Uh, when you do your best and you still come up short, when you do everything that is in your power to, you know, to do the right thing and you're still like, you don't finish, you don't get to the finishing line. That is very um, heart-wrenchingly depressing, basically. And having to give up some projects, I mean, you know, I had a beautiful production facility. I had spent so much money of my own. And to lose that money and then to regroup and re come back again, you know, losing your relationship, losing your marriage, and at times not being loved by your kids, you know, it, it was painful because so I've always been a very loving father in that sense. So how did that, like you spend time with the children, you're like, but... I guess that's when you actually you talked about how you cooked your way to your daughter's heart, mm. right? So how did that, because I guess, and you said in one of your things, like, you know, you are, um, you had honest about that self, like you have been, you have never doubted yourself, like you've doubted yourself as a man, as a husband, but you never as a father. Right. I never doubted myself as the love of my kids. I mean, I knew how much I loved them and how much they loved me. It is the fact that how was I able to justify to them that I was going to be leaving the relationship and they're going to have to be okay with it because I literally had made that decision to say, I'm going to go and I need to do this on my own. I needed to fly and soar and be who I am. 
they understood that. We always talked about it. They understood it. They didn't respect it, but they understood it. And I had this fabulous time um, with my older daughter that I went to India with. And at one time, we were sitting somewhere, having a little drink. And she looked at me and she said, Papa, now I understand why you're so weird. Why you wobble your head like this. Why you do things like this. Why are you so loud all the time? Because we were in Bombay and it was loud and it was honking was going on. It was crazy. And she said, all these years I used to understand why can my father not just relax? Why can he not be a little quiet and have a relaxed time? Because now I realize for 19 years you grew up in this, this chaos. Obviously your life is chaos. You create chaos. If I don't have stress, I go out and create stress because that's my nature. And she realized it. She was like, now I understand because everything was going perfect. Mm -hmm. The businesses were flourishing. Everything was going perfect. And then I pulled the plug of saying, oh, I want to do something different. And it's a, it's a hereditary trait of mine that I've always done it. It's a, if everything is going smooth, I have a tendency to screw it up sometimes. Like to challenge yourself. Like to challenge myself, like to challenge my relationships, like to challenge everything else. I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. I have learned a lesson now. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I'm 55 years old. I've learned a lesson saying, no, I'm going to acknowledge and have the gratitude for what I have. And I'm going to hold on to it and I love it because I have come back from that huge path. And plus, I don't have that energy anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, at the age of 40, you have the energy to still push it. Now I've reached a point where <laughs> I, I want it to be, I want it to be smooth, smoother sailing. sailing. <laughs> now I'm going to just tag, there's a line going from that. And there was something that I, you talked about the Rishi, your third eye, right? And there's a line you wrote in this book. You said, I loved and felt it was such a, when you were in Banff and you reached the BAMF and you were walking up the street mm. and you looked at the hotel and you said um, one of the chapters you arrived in Calgary and you reached the BAMF and the site of the BAMF hotel you said you stood there on the road and gazed up at it for several minutes mm. one day I, I will conquer you mm. right and you promise yourself mm. I will conquer you mm. that word that <laughs> powerful moment that came out of you Right. So I always I, the reason I say because that's where we kind of pull our internal inner inner power inner self, the strength we have inside that we know don't know it's hidden. Mm. And you pulled it out that day. So you put it out to the universe. I did. And you know why it was a powerful moment? Is mm -hmm. because I was exhausted from the travel. I had come from Austria um, to Calgary coming to Banff, another two hours. The, the travel was so exhausting. But more than that, the language was again. So uh, here I was an Indian at the age of 19, going to Austria to speak German, worked my way out, got myself fitted into the German mold. Mm -hmm. And then I plucked myself out and replanted myself into the Canadian mold. And so now I had to re-grapple myself. And the only way I could re-grapple myself or rethink about myself was to have that drishti, to have that focus and say, I'm going to conquer you one day. I am going to become a manager of you one day. You have called me here, which was the hotel. I actually spoke to the hotel <laughs> and said, you have called me here. I am going to conquer you one day. I had to have that energy. I had to have that focus in order for me to get up in the morning to go to work the next day because I was feeling so exhausted from everything that what have I done here? What have I done again? You know, I was working and then I've decided to come to Canada. Those moments, and it's the same thing. It happens with the factory. It happened with the restaurant. You know, when I, when I first opened the restaurant up, my goal was I wanted people to understand my cuisine. And then when we reached the next level, I was like, 
I want to be known, mm-hmm. not for the money that I earned, not for how much money I had amassed, but more for that that man single-handedly changed the way Indian food is perceived in this country. And you did? That was my drishti. Well, you accomplished that. So Thank I'm you. So proud of you because Thank you. you did that. Thank you. Well, we're going to continue this conversation with Vikram Bej. And if you want to f- hear the full conversation, please log into my website, amangil.com. Thank you for watching. Click subscribe and hit the notification button to check out more on our content. We're going to continue this conversation on amangil.com.